for the audio or you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot cakes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line Can hold it down. Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground. And to all the listeners tuned in right now, got debates, analysis, and speculation. This is sports talk for the new generation. You know where to find us, got a reputation. Sick podcast, your number one sports destination. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. All in, we came in a win. We're gonna give everything. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K sick, sick. On fire, we're ready to fight. We'll bring the house down tonight. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K sick, sick. S-I-C-K. The sickest podcast, tune in for the audio, or you can even watch back, giving players all the props, or put them on blast, we don't give no hot takes, only talk back, S-I-C-K, 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 For the audio, or you can even watch back, giving players all the props, or put them on blast. We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion, going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. All in, we came in. Can hold it down. Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground. And to all the listeners tuned in right now, got debates, analysis, and speculation. This is sports talk for the new generation. You know where to find us, got a reputation. Sick podcast, your number one sports destination. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. All in, we came in a win. We're gonna give everything. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K sick, sick. On fire, we're ready to fight. We'll bring the house down tonight. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K sick, sick. S-I-C-K is the sickest. For the audio, or you can even watch back, giving players all the props, or put them on blast. We don't give no hot takes, only talk back. S I C K. S I C K. Turn up your volume. Your volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. Sick Podcast. With Tony Maradero. 55 seconds left in the penalty, a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time. Boston 4, Montreal 3. 
Lafleur coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into the mayor back to Lafleur. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> there is a ball. Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle une passe devant. Et c'est la bonne chose. Et c'est la bonne chose. Et c'est la victoire des Canadiens. Stanley pour les Canadiens. Le 23e de l'histoire. You found the dogs. John, you found the dogs. He found the dogs. And all together, they worked a young team to the top. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. It's going to be sick. Marinero on this Thursday night. How are you? It is one minute past 10 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, the SICK Podcast brought to you in part by Energy Transportation Group, a leading full-service logistics provider serving all of North America. They are driven to be different. And also brought to you in part by La Bête à TB, brewed in Quebec and a winner of a dozen international awards. La Bête à TB offers quality microbrewery beers made with premium ingredients. And for everyone's taste, La Bête à TB, embrace your true nature. What a game again tonight at the Bell Center. I have to tell you, although I'm disappointed the Canadians picked up another point again tonight, after picking up another point again a couple of nights ago, uh, I am really excited to tell you, though, that what an entertaining game. And I'm going to tell you something. And I'm going to tell you right now, for anyone who doubted Marty St. Louis as a coach, if you didn't tell them before that they were an idiot, Tony Marinaro gives you the okay to tell them now. Never mind what anyone's going to tell you. Never mind what anyone's going to tell you, whether teams are underestimating the Canadians or this or that or whatever, all that stuff. Never mind all that. The Canadians are so depleted. The Canadians are so decimated. Like 75% of the team that started the season in Montreal was not in tonight's game, okay? And uh, the way they competed with the New York Rangers, who, yes, were a little bit better than the Canadians, and the way they competed the other night with the Carolina Hurricanes, who, yes, were a little bit better than the Canadians, but already you can already see that when the Canadians are going to be a more competitive team in terms of having better player personnel, having a better roster, having a deeper lineup in about three years from now, and imagine being a healthier team than they are now. The Montreal Canadiens are going to be able to play with anybody. And what the management team has been striving for to, to make this a team that will be a very good team and will be a very, very good team for many years to come, to have it be sustainable – I already see it happening before our very own eyes, and I'm not so sure if you do or not, but I see it. The Canadians, those concepts that Marty St. Louis talks about in stresses, I see what they're doing and and, and the way they're playing in small-sided games and practicing in small-sided games so that they can exercise everyone's IQ to make decisions, the good decisions right away, uh, their puck handling ability, their decision with the puck, their, their, their playmaking, their passing, uh, these concepts, they're working. I'm telling you, they are working, and this team is going to be good. They're already really fun to watch, really fun. This is all I wanted down the stretch is like, you know what? Entertain me. I was entertained tonight a lot, and a game had overtime again, and it had shootouts again, and there were there were breakaways, and there were shorthanded, and there were power plays, and there were scoring chances, and there were great goals, and there were great saves. It had everything. Absolutely everything. And last game had everything too. Last game had everything too. Some real good games here. And I, you know what? Like, you would think March 9th and the season ends in the middle of April. And you would think that, you know, maybe people are going to become disinterested at one point. These are some of the most entertaining games that we've seen all season. And I'm very interested, even though I know the Canadians are like 27th in the league out of 32 teams, and they're obviously not making the playoffs, but it's they're fun to watch, man. They're fun to watch. 26 wins and 39 losses, I don't care. A 446 winning percentage, I don't care. A minus 54 goal differential, I don't care. 
They've lost a couple of games in a row. I don't care. They're going to be good. This is a good coach. It's a good management team. I have a lot of confidence. I'm telling you, I have a lot of confidence. Dallas Stars, by the way, put 10 past the Buffalo Sabres tonight. Who would have thought that? 10. 10. Matt O'Han, who's your host of the Sick Podcast on Friday night, starting at 10 o'clock, is going to join me tonight. I think we have him. Matt. Tony. What's going on, gangster? I'm fantastic. How about yourself? Very, very good. Thank you. Has anyone I mean, uh, ever called you gangster before? You have called me gangster. Whenever you call me, you call me gangster. So this is nothing out of the uh, out of the ordinary. I feel fantastic because very quickly that seven nothing loss to Liverpool was uh, flushed out of my brain today with a nice four one win against Real Betis by Manchester United. Oh, that's right. You're a Manchester United fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sunday was very, very painful. I uh, did not enjoy Sunday. You know what? Ever since Cristiano Ronaldo moved on, Manchester United as a team has played better soccer the way Eric Ten Hag probably thought that they would, with the exception of that one game where Jamie Carragher, of course, uh, doing the analysis and the play-by-play or color, whatever he was doing, he was laughing after every goal. That one there was ugly. Uh, But, yeah, no, they bounced back very, very nicely. But I have to tell you, and I know we're talking about cup games here, but uh, the English Premier League, uh, it's, it's so amazing. It's so oh, amazing. It's the best. It's my, nephew's, really... my nephew's a big fan of Arsenal. Mm. And uh, and my youngest has adopted them as his English Premier League team because his real team is Real Madrid. But he's adopted them as his English Premier League team because the English Premier League is his favorite league. So anyway, it's it's, it's all good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's been a it's been a great Premier League season. It's been really fun to follow along Manchester United and see the resurgence. It's fun. It's fun to see. Honestly, I really you know how it is in English football. You can't really have a second favorite team. But you know, as someone who's out of the action, yeah, and not not born into it, I I, I really enjoy seeing uh, other teams other than Liverpool and Manchester City have success. So it's it's nice to see Arsenal back in the mix. Yeah. All right. So now let's go back to hockey before someone just, you know, just yeah, drives. Yeah, before they curse us out. Yeah. They drive on the Champlain Bridge and they stop the car and they're like <laughs> tempted to like, you know, jump or whatever. Uh, you and I will talk about that off air. But of course, we are going to talk about the Canadians. But tonight was um, it was an entertaining game. It really was. I really enjoyed watching that game tonight. I'm not going to lie to you. When there's about 20 games left in a season and stuff like that, and the Canadians are out of it. You say to yourself, oh, my God, how am I going to maintain interest between now and the end of the year? And you have no other choice but to do so when you work in this line of work because, you know, you have to Mm. talk about them. Uh, But there were days where you go in and you talk about them or you go on and you talk about them and it's painful and it's hard. And it's kind of like the longest hour of your life type of thing. But there's so much to be, I find, to be excited about this team. There's so much to be uh, excited about. It's, It's really something. I mean... Uh, Tonight, for example, uh, Michael Matheson, who's been like a great story all year long. Did you see how many minutes he played tonight? Uh, No, I didn't. I didn't. I I said I didn't before I went to go look at it. All right. Okay. I I just went to look at it, and that's an impressive number. 3,157. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, 3157. I mean, that number's so high. Some people don't even have that as an address. You know, like that's a, that's that's a that's a high number, man. 3157. And this that's is a regular a, season game, you know. You see that number in playoffs when, you know, teams they need to lean on their guys and you see that when your a game goes into triple overtime. You don't see that in a regular season game too often. I bet you Matheson loves it. You know, like some some players when they play too much, mm. they'll probably off the record complain and say, "Oh my god, I got this guy just he keeps on to playing me and playing me and playing <laughs> me and playing me." Like I bet you, Matheson is like over the moon. Like West Island kid comes back home, grew up cheering for the Canadians, his family cheering for the Canadians, playing a game at the Bell Center, playing versus the Rangers, being on the ice for thirty two minutes. I bet you this guy's like over the moon happy, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I got to agree. And like, you know, he's one of those guys that you watch him play and you watch him, you know, you know, they show the players in between whistles. They show they show players in videos after the games. He just looks genuinely happy. And, and you know, I love a guy like that. Just genuinely 
happy to be here. And there's, and it seems like that's, you know, it would be 95%. I won't, I won't go as far to say a hundred cause I don't know that for a fact, but it seems like 95% of the team is happy that they're here. Yeah, no, it's uh, so that was a great story tonight. I've been going crazy over the last little while because Nick Suzuki has been getting so many minutes too. And of course, you know, if you're going to play your best players, you're going to end up picking up points in the standings, right? So they picked up points uh, tonight in last game. So that kind of makes me a little bit unhappy. But, you know, a lot of people looked at Suzuki's size or lack thereof in the last couple of years. Uh, he's not six foot. I mean, the the um, the debate is out whether he's 5'10 or 5'11. He is mm-hmm. stocky. You know, some would say maybe that he's thick. Some would say that he's stocky. Some would say maybe... Uh, he would be better if he would lose a few pounds. And that's something that he looked at last year, too. If he lost some pounds, would he be a better player? But all that to say is that some people had their doubts whether or not he can play 22, 23, 24, 25, game in, game out, game in, game out. And if you know whether or not he would break down, does he have that sustainability? Does he have that durability? Because he's not a big guy. And, you know, especially when you play center in the National Hockey League, sometimes you go up against, you know, guys 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", 6'5". I mean, this guy's one of the top. I don't have it in front of me right now. But a couple of weeks ago, I looked into it, or a lot of people looked into it, and he was like top five in, or top six in ice time mm-hmm. in the entire National Hockey League. So he's a guy who's in the top ten uh, of ice time for sure. And he's not breaking down. And he's not tailing off. And, you know, he's just, he can handle it. He can handle it. You know, I love seeing that. And, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know. I feel like there there may be bias in this, but on both sides. But I see a lot of people in the analytics community. They, they're not the biggest fan of Nick Suzuki. And they all, you know, they're saying that he has one of the worst contracts in the NHL, you know, according to their algorithms and what and whatnot. And like, that's got to be like one of the, like, I'm not a big they, fan they of can, it. They, uh, can, they can take their algorithms and, and, and they can shove, it, and shove yeah. it. Yeah. You know where. Yeah, exactly. Because like just that stat alone where like he's not just playing against the best players night in, night out. Like he's it's not like they're just throwing him on the ice. He's out there because he's competing with them and he's doing a fantastic job of it. So like that stat that you just named and the fact that he's doing so well. Yeah, he went through a little bit of a dip, but he's picked it back up uh, points production wise. That's got to be like, I I don't know if he's aware of these things, but like that's got to be like a huge middle finger, at least from the Habs fan base that has to see this pointed out all the time. Oh, this guy is terrible. This is a contract. You're going to regret it. That's going to be a huge middle finger to the rest the people that doubted him because you know what he's been having a fantastic season even with that point step he's been unbelievable you know the way people are and you know what i shouldn't say people but well we're, you know we count this people because we're probably like that too but human nature is when you're talking about sports is that um you, you look at the you look at the present right mm-hmm. now everyone could talk well about nick suzuki when his production had tailed off you know, we were all starting to wonder, you know, is it, uh, maybe was it too much money? Is he, is he too small? Yeah. Uh, you know, so, but I, like, I'm willing, like, I'm ready to say right now, and I know he's got like six years left on the contract or whatever it is. Like, I'm, I'm ready to say, I'm willing to say, and I've said this before, I don't think I've ever swayed to tell you the truth. Nick Suzuki, he's worth that money. Like, that's it. Like, it doesn't matter if this guy goes into a slump, a game, two games, three games, four games, six games. He's worth the money. I mean, there's no one who's going to convince me otherwise. I mean, the guy is good, man. He's good. Now, oh, listen, whether, you, get a, whether, you get a number whether, one center, you get a number one center at seven point eight million dollars. You're laughing, especially with the way that the cap's going to go over the over the next few years. It's supposed to be going up, uh, you know, exponentially. Uh, you're laughing at a number one center at that price. Yeah, some will just probably say that they don't think he's a number one center in, on a team that would win the Stanley Cup. You know? And that's and that's fine. We saw we saw him as a number as a number two center um, on a team that went to the Stanley Cup final. And, you know, had it had it, you know, you can make the argument that Philip Deneau at times was the number two center and that Nick Suzuki was the one. No, so you're right about that. Yeah, you you're know, right about that. And they got to the Stanley Cup final a couple of years ago. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Did you see my pants yesterday on the on the program yesterday? Uh, it's funny you mentioned pants. I was uh, with no, a mapper, Mark Andre Perot. Yeah. 
No, I didn't see the pants part because I uh, I fell asleep a little early last night because uh, I had to go into the office today. But it's funny you, you mentioned pants because how early uh, did you go to sleep last night? I went to bed at about uh, ten thirty. Oh, by the way, I read a comment today, and comments, you know, after twenty years that you're doing this, they're not supposed to bother you, but we're yeah, all yeah. human, and there's some that bother me every now and then, right? So yeah. every now and then, I like to banter, right? I like to banter, like we're yeah, doing but- right now, right? So someone commented that, you know, it's obvious that I'm not well prepared for the shows because every now and then I banter. So you know why I banter every now and then? Because I have a personality, because I want to try and engage, because I want to try and have conversations, because people that listen don't want to listen to, you know, the whole sports from start to finish and for the entire 60 minutes for a minute or two or three or four. They'd like for you to get off of track a little bit and stuff like that. So I do that. But trust me. I am well prepared. I can tell you that right now because, you know, if you want, what we can do is we can talk about Raphael RV Pinard on the three on three on the power play, uh, on the three on three on the overtime. We could talk about Raphael Harvey Pinard uh, put on the power play as a screen in the overtime. We could talk about Caden Gooley uh, pinching up in the play and taking a stab at it after coming back in the lineup tonight mm. uh, and Gooley scores his fourth of the season. Uh, we could talk about Alex Belzil, who now has three goals in his last three games, and Belzil coming down the left wing and picking the top corner. Uh, we could talk about Josh Anderson, who now has scored 19 goals, and he's one shy of 20. We could talk about the fact that Anderson scored on the penalty kill, and he's becoming maybe a more well-rounded player than he has before. We could talk about the fact that it was Tierney, who has uh, who's shown some pretty good playmaking ability since the Montreal Canadiens were able to pick him up, and he assisted on that goal we could talk about the fact that uh um you know samuel montambo uh made some pretty good saves and he went toe to toe with shesterkin on the other side we could talk about the fact that canadians went 0 for 3 on the power play and the reason why the rangers were able to get back in this game and win this game tonight uh after trailing on a couple of occasions was because the rangers were able to score on the power play Mm. two out of the four times but unfortunately for the canadians they went 0 for three on the power play we could talk about michael matheson in terms of his ice time and he's getting the kind of ice time that normally number one defensemen get we could talk about the fact that caden gooley just coming back in the lineup already seems to be the guy that Marty St. Louis has more confidence in than guys like Edmondson, Kovacevic, and it's, you know, Weidman especially. I mean, Gooley is that guy, third in ice time behind Matheson and behind David Savard. Um, you know, we could talk about the fact that Belzil uh, is kind of like a Swiss Army knife and does everything right now for this team. We could talk about the fact that Michael Pozzetta had six hits in this hockey game. We could talk about the fact that uh, Jonathan Drouin played 16 minutes and 52 seconds, but tonight he was not on the board, but an assist for Dennis Gorianov. Uh, we mm. could talk about Rem Pitlick showing that, you know what, uh, he's more playing more like the Rem Pitlick of a year ago uh, than he played earlier this season, and he also gets some power play time. He also gets some time uh, gets a shootout on a three on, and then three on three in the overtime. There's more ice time for uh, for Rem Pitlick, so they they're able to give him that ice time. Uh, there's more ice, I should say, so they give him more ice time with having more ice, more open room. Um, no, he wasn't on the power play. Well, he only had seven seconds on the power play. But so, folks, there's a million things to talk about. There's no shortage of stuff to talk about, right? But every now and then, if I want to talk to my buddy Matt O'Hayen about my pants, hey Matt, did you see my pants yesterday? And he says no. Matt, the most comfortable pants on the face of the earth. You ready? Look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit me, hit me, hit me. Those. Okay. What? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, keep going. Keep going. You should wear them like overalls. <laughs> Oh, man, you're the best. Those are comfortable pants, buddy. Those are no, really, see, really comfortable pants. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's funny. Yeah. I say it's funny because you mentioned pants because I got a last-minute call from uh, okay. from Yellow and Sammy saying, hey, you, are you home? You want to jump on with Tony? Okay. And you know me. I, lo- I love doing this. So I'll never yeah. – I'll, 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 if I'm available, I never say no. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you. The, tonight yeah. I let out a <sighs> – yeah, I'm gonna do it. The reason why, yeah, I, w- I was watching the game without pants on. So, 
you know, like, like only my, my, my midwit, my midriff up is showing, but okay. I did have to, I did, I said, you know what? I got to put on some shorts at the very least. And, you know, did, have a uh, little bit of self-respect. Did you have a, a pillow nearby or what? I was lying down. Yeah, because George Larac likes to do this show with. Oh his yeah, 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 yeah. He like, he likes to do the show horizontal. Hey, tweet from the Montreal Canadiens uh, updated injury report. You ready? Hit me. Brendan Gallagher out another three to four weeks. Mm -hmm. Arbor Jacki underwent uh, shoulder surgery. Full recovery should be ready by training camp. Mm. Kirby Doc out indefinitely. You know with. With 17 games left, like they keep picking up points. And just like you, it's driving me crazy because, you know, I see last night, like Vancouver wins in overtime against Anaheim. Mm -hmm. So like that, that, you know, like we and like I'm thinking going into night, oh, this is fantastic. The Rangers are going to smack the Habs and they're going to, you know, gain some ground and maybe move up the standings or move down the standings, depending on how you're, how you're looking at them. It's like, it's almost like when is this shoe going to drop that like, when is enough enough? And they're going to be able to not compete because of the amount of players that are just not there. They're well coached, bud. I, I know. The it's, it's the concepts it's, it's, that are kicking in. It's working. I know. And I was thinking about it this morning because I was thinking, you know, like tomorrow is going to be my first post-trade deadline episode. So obviously I can't talk about trades. I'm not going to be talking about the, the off-season trades. And I'm thinking, I'm like, God damn, like Martez St. Louis – he just put, like on Tuesday night put mm -hmm. his team toe to toe with one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference, and like they belonged for sixty minutes. That was, uh, you know, it's not like they got a couple lucky bounces here or there, and that's how they were in it. No, yeah, they belonged in that game for sixty minutes tonight. Yeah. It's not like you know uh, they got a bounce here, a bounce there. No, they belonged for sixty minutes against a cup front runner. Like, that's not nothing. I don't care, like you said off the top, I don't care that, like, maybe this team is, uh, you know, is uh, t taking them lightly. Let me tell you something. Championship teams don't take any team lightly. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter at any point yeah. in the season. They are, their goal is to win. So I'm, I'm with you. You know, Martin St. Louis – just you know you got to throw him his flowers especially now yeah. at the end of the season it's really it's really great and i love that uh you know he pushes the game to shootout says hey look we just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the rangers now i'm gonna throw rem pitlick and uh, alex belzil in the shootout so uh, yeah fans get what they want the tank fans get what they want i i hear you bud but uh, you know i you know i don't think he was thinking of the tank fans i think he was no just i know I, he was give, I know you were he being was sarcastic. rewarding he was, he was rewarding players yeah. that were working hard yeah 100 yeah, 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 yeah. Now, you know, we've heard that players don't tank, and we believe that players don't tank. We believe all that stuff. Everyone who's a competitive, anyone who's an athlete is obviously competitive, and they 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 play to win no matter what they do, even if they're playing a ping pong game with their with their teammate. Uh, having said that, I've always been of the belief that management teams can do certain things or ask certain things of some of their staffers, uh, which includes a coach, an assistant coach, which includes, you know, um, you know, uh, athletic therapist, uh, whatever they can do certain things that can help dictate certain things. And no one will ever admit this, but if I, you know, I, I would bet that in a lost season like this one and in a lost season, like last year's, when they had players out with injuries, they made them take their time or maybe even yeah. recommended they yeah. take another week, whereas you normally wouldn't do that. You agree yeah, with that? Yeah, no, for sure. I agree. But, like, then, you know, I don't like, let's spend 30 seconds on the next player. It, it just, be, it, like, it kind of makes you wonder, what was the deal with Sean Monaghan then? Like, why rush if it was a lost season? Was it because the game was in Calgary and he wanted to play in front of those fans again? Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's weird, but I agree with you that that's what they're doing. Cause like dock out indefinitely, you know, that's basically saying, you know, that, we don't that, really that know. was, a, that and was like, an exception. That was an exception. Obviously, you know, when I'm saying that they're not going to rush guys back yeah, and yeah, you're going to yeah. bring up Monaghan, I think that was an exception. I don't know why you want it. You know, maybe Monaghan, you know, wanted to come back badly because he's a player whose contract is up at the end of the year and he had yeah, to he play to, and, to and show what he can athlete. do so that he can get another contract after, you know? Yeah, and he's also an athlete, and he wants to play. You know, he gets paid to play. He wants to be out there. Yeah, but it, it's just that it was just it was just like a little. Weird. But no, I completely agree with you though. Like in a, for the most part, in a 
season, like take your time. It doesn't matter. You know, we always say that managers, they'll, they'll put their teams in a position to, to, you know, to lose. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Like it's happening right now in Montreal. Well, I mean, they lost, but they still picked up a point. Yeah. Uh, we're going to, we're going to take calls tonight. Uh, and of course it's you called. You called. Call. Presented by Playground. You called is brought to you by Playground. The major poker festivals are back at Playground. The March Million features 10 ring events and around a uh, million dollars in guaranteed prize money, uh, including uh, a 400000 guaranteed main event play in Playground's March Million Poker Series from March 23rd to April 2nd. Visit playground.ca for uh, more details. So once again, 10 ring events and a million dollars in guaranteed prize pools. Wow, that's pretty special. The number is there, okay? So that if you want, you can pick up your uh, cordless phone at home at one 585 sick That's one 585 7425 It is a toll-free number. So if you want to give us a call, no problem. We're ready to go with that. Uh, if not, Agnello and Sammy will throw some of your questions and some of your comments out there, and uh, we'll get to that as well. Uh, Raphael RV Pinard, uh, his contract is up. Um, he makes in the eight hundreds and a lot of people are wondering what kind of contract this guy's going to get because his numbers are absolutely fantastic. What number do you have? Less than two. Yeah, it has to be, you know, sure. for sure. It's, it's a, I mean, I would say probably one, I would say if I had to guess one point, point three seven five. you know, yeah, in that range. Right. Kind yeah, of uh, you know, he'll, he'll, kind of internet do you have, man? Like every time uh, it happens off. Yeah, start, I know. Oh, listen, like, D2. like what's the story here? But listen, man, you know, just like that time way back when at the beginning of the season when uh, George Lerac was uh, was uh, chirping you about your internet and saying, what kind of internet do they have in LaSalle? I, I yeah. think uh, you, you may have pulled a prank on me and switched modems with me because uh, – my internet is uh, terrible. They have better internet in, uh, oh. uh, in you know, the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, it, it actually wasn't my internet then because I was on a hardwired. It had nothing to do with my internet. Uh, well, that's it. Sammy and Yellow gave I me think... a hardwire. They 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 ordered me an extender. Yeah. And I hard and I bought the adapter to hardwire it into my laptop. Still nothing. You bought the adapter to hardwire it into your laptop. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I, you know what? I don't know. We should probably send over an expert there. What do you think? I, I mean, listen, uh, if Sammy and Yellow want to bring over an expert, of, of course, and bring uh, some uh, Beta TB beer because, you know, they keep saying, oh, I got to send you. And Yellow always, he goes, oh, I got to send you beer, man. I got to send you. I'm waiting. Yeah. You know, it's th it's three weeks now. What is the you got uh, you got someone walking yeah. over from Kirkland or what? I I I, I had a case of uh, twelve that I have set aside here for Marc Andre Perot. Uh, I have a case of twelve for you too as well. Uh, I I probably live closer to you than Agnello does, right? Where are you exactly again? Uh, the Cote Saint Luc. Cote Saint Luc. I'm probably closer than he is. I'm in LaSalle, LaSalle of Cote Saint Luc. He's in Kirkland. I'm I'm closer. So uh, I can give you the beer. How about we? How about we all go for lunch? You're just trying Easy. to get a free lunch out of it again. Nah, it's, come on. Like, I'll you're, pay really, it you're, you're really smart. You're really smart. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just trying to get a free lunch out of it. You know? <laughs> Actually, Agnello and I are going... Who, who do you bring up here? Hey, you brought up somebody. I think you brought up a caller. Hello, who's this? Dino. Dino who? Massanucci. Ah, tabernush. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt O'Han, do you know Dino Mazzanotti? No, I don't. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about Dino Mazzanotti. Okay? okay, go ahead. So Dino Mazzanotti uh, is very, very passionate about hockey and very, very passionate about coaching. I don't know how many years ago it was now, I'm going to guess probably about seven, but Dino will tell us in a second because time flies when you're having fun and time goes fast. But uh, Dino uh, coached s several 
with several institutions and at several levels. He was a former assistant with McGill, and the head coach was Martin Raymond, former assistant coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning. He was uh, he coached uh, Guy Boucher when he was playing for him at Cégep saint laurent He's a former coach of André Lorando. Uh, he coached, I believe, in St. Tithin. I believe I could be wrong. Dino will tell us in a second, but he coached in the queue. Uh, he has coached in Switzerland. So Dino's coached in various, various levels, cities, mm. provinces, countries. Dino loves to play hockey. Dino's a friend of mine. And um, Dino would play pickup hockey a couple of times a week. He'd be on the ice probably five or six times a week. As a matter of fact, he had a company called Group Dinamo where they would do team building exercises and they would uh, have companies come in with their employees and uh, they'd have a lot of team building and a lot of it was done on the ice. Well, when Dino got back to the bench playing a game of pickup hockey many, many years ago with his teammates and his friends in LaSalle, I believe at Jacques Lemaire Arena, Dino, yeah. Dino passed out on the bench when he, got, uh, when he came back from off the ice. His heart stopped. Uh, his teammates and his friends tried to come to his rescue. The ambulance was called. I believe there was a defibrillator. I believe they used yeah. it on Dino. And Dino uh, was dead at one point, and they were able to revive him. When they brought Dino to the hospital, he died again, and they were able to revive him again. So Dino Mazzanotti died twice. And then Dino was in a coma for an extended period of time. And his brother, Tony, gave me a call one day and said, Tony, I think we have to say goodbye to Dino. It's one of the worst phone calls I ever got in my life. I went to the hospital that night um, to say goodbye to Dino, but I didn't want to say goodbye. I, 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 I spoke to Dino who was in a coma and told him he had to come out and he had to, and he had to wake up tomorrow by tomorrow. He had to wake up because the following day, the doctor had uh, talked to said to the family, we're, we're going to pull the plug if he doesn't come out of it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I went there and it's, you know, you got to come out of it. You got to come out of it. Well, but there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of hope. And the next day I would say minutes before they decided to pull the plug, Guess who woke up? Dino, I'm so glad you did. Dino, how are you? Thank you. Good. Uh, not too bad. Everything's good. When I hear you, remind me when I used to go talk with you. So, uh, you know, I think everything's coming back slowly. Uh, that's amazing. Dino Mazanotti. What an amazing story. And you know who went to see Dino at the hospital? So I went. Martin Raymond went. Jean Perron went. Guy Boucher, Guy Boucher went. A lot of members yeah. of the hockey community went to see mm -hmm. Dino because Dino has uh, given so much to the game of hockey. And Dino's been, uh, Dino's a good man. Dino's a good man. And uh, welcome back, Dino. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, you guys do a great job, man. I love, uh, you know, hockey was always my life. And, you know, when the doctor said one thing, I, I was not supposed to speak in English no more because my my main language is French. So when I went out of the coma, the doctor said to my girlfriend and my son, he said, Dino won't speak no more language no more. So I look at the doctor when I wake up, and I say, in French, could I talk to you? He said, yes. You said, I told that to the doctor, you said that I won't be able to speak in English no more. He said, yes. And I won't be able to skating. He said, yes. So I look at the doctor and I say, thank you. And I start crying. And I told the doctor, if you, you're going to stop saying that I won't skate no more. I'm going out of here next week, and I'm going to go skate. The week after, I went out of the hospital. I went to skate. I was falling all over on the ice, but I was on the ice. And since then, I'm going all over. 
that's a short story about what happened to me. And you know, do you know how many years ago was it again? How many years ago? Because I guess seven, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was more. Years ago, seven, seven years ago. Seven years ago. That's it. The eighth of February. The eighth of yeah. February of seven years ago. Look at that. Look at that. It's crazy, but you know, there's one thing. You know what saved me? You guys saved me. Tony, the all the friends and the family, because if one not being of you guys, I would not be here today. Because I told the doctor one day, the day you're gonna stop the visit, it's the day that I'm gonna die. Because they wanted to stop the visit. I said, no, that's it. And you know, because of you guys, I'm still here today. And I always say that. And the family and you guys, you saved my life. That's crazy, but it's that's about it. And like I said, for me, there was four words that carry me when I was coaching. And I used to tell the players, if you want to get a good life and do your right thing, you have to work, you have to have will, you have to have discipline and respect. Like, I don't have to like you, but in my head, I always, I say you have to respect them. And I, I'm expecting the same way of you guys towards me. Merci, Dino. But uh, my... Thank you, Dino. But uh, you, you saved yourself, man, man. You saved yourself. You, uh, you obviously wanted to live longer, and that's why yeah. you came back to life three times. You know, you were dead the first time. You came back. You were dead the second time. You came back. You were in a coma. They were about to pull the plug. You came back a third time. So, you you, you know, obviously you still had a lot more to bring uh, to this world. You have a passion for yeah. life. Uh, and, yeah. uh, and you wanted to come back, Dino. So you did it yourself. Dino, so like you said, you, know, you and I, we used to work. Uh, webcast together. We used to talk hockey yeah. often. You used to be a collaborator uh, on my show from time to time. I would give you a call. Yeah. Uh, great story, and thank you for telling the story to so many people who hadn't heard your story before because, Dino, you might not know this, but you inspired an entire community tonight, right? There, There's, there's a bunch of people watching right now on YouTube mm -hmm. Live uh, I would say, give or take, about 350 people. It's probably another 150 on Twitter. That's about 500. There's probably over another 150 on Facebook. Give or take, there's over 600 people watching live. By the time, you know, we get to tomorrow, there's probably going to be five or 6,000 people that have viewed this on YouTube alone. You've inspired an entire community tonight by saying your story, Dino, because, you know, once again, you came back three times, Dino. Three times you came back. Uh, uh, like I say they told you you were never going to talk again you talked again they told you you were never going to walk again you walked again they told you you were never going to skate again you skated again They told you're doing all of this and I see you putting up videos Dino of you going to the gym I'm embarrassed to say I, I can't go to the gym I don't have your energy, I don't have your willpower, I don't have your determination. And you were dead funny. three times. It's funny, today I went to the gym this morning. For me, it's a good thing because it, 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 it works on my body. But you know what works more when I was in the, when I go in the gym? My head, everything clears up when I go to the gym. When I used to skate, I used to go skate to take everything out of my head. And it's exactly the same thing. But, you know, Tony, I want to take the opportunity right now to say thank you to guys like you. Because you saved my life. You guys saved my life. Like today, you give me the chance to talk. You saved my life. And I always say not be of you guys i would not be here but okay let's stop now talking about me and i'm gonna let you go on with nah, you know we everyone. could we could we could talk about you whenever you want hey uh since we have you on the line here before we go to someone else uh what do you think of this team that is rebuilding 
I, I want to talk to you about Martin St. Louis because I know you you coached for how many years, Dino? 20 years. 20 years you coached. When Martin St. Louis <laughs> was hired, when he was hired by Jeff Gorton and Kent Hughes to coach the Montreal Canadiens, there's some... Uh, coaches here in Quebec, whether it's in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League or at another level, who were a little bit upset. They believe that Martin St. Louis was given a privilege because he was Martin St. Louis. They believe that they probably put in a lot more time or they had friends or colleagues or knew of people who put in more time who deserve that opportunity. So, you know, he kind of had some people against them from the onset. Now that you've had a chance to see him, you know, do his thing, for over a year, what's your opinion of Martin Saint Louis in terms of his coaching? This year, it's not a good year to say what we think about coaches. Like what I want to say, like this year, the year means nothing at all. So we could, they could test everything. You know who's going to be the biggest test is next year. Next year, when all the injury will come back and everything will come back, we're going to see the difference. But, Dino, don't you, you think, know? though, don't you think, Dino, the fact that they have all these injuries, okay, and yeah. take yeah. the last couple, and I know two games don't make a season, right? But the Canadians, yeah. even though they've lost most of their games, they're in most of their games and look at the battle they gave the Rangers and look at the battle they gave Carolina and look at, you know, what Marty St. Louis did for so many players to turn their game around. Taking a look at that, aren't you ready to say that he's a good coach? He did a a great job. I'm a hundred percent with you. He did a great job, but next year is going to be the year to say if he starts back, he starts next year with a bad start, it won't last long. That's for sure. Like I say, this year doesn't mean nothing at all. It's finished. It's you could try everything. It's it's the easiest year to as a coach to go behind the bench. You could try everything. Nobody's gonna go on your back. That's you, for sure. but you see, you know here. I don't agree with you. You and I usually agree with each other, right? Here I don't. And let me explain. Let me explain. I believe that the plan is that the Canadians will probably just miss out on the playoffs again next year. Now, they might make it. They might not. If they don't make it, I don't think it's the end of the world to them. So when you say that if he doesn't get uh, get off to a good start, he could be in trouble, I don't think he will be in trouble. I believe that in Jeff Gordon's world, he wants to have Kent Hughes by his side for a long time. And in Kent Hughes's world, he wants to have Marty St. Louis and Vinny LeCavalier by his side for a long period of time. They are a team. Gorton, Hughes, St. Louis, um, LeCavalier, maybe even Bobrov. I think... I think they want to grow old together, man. I think they want to be here for a long time. And I don't think Marty St. Louis will be in trouble if the Canadians get off to a bad start next year, Dino. Uh, I'm not sure about that because, you know, Martin St. Louis is, used to be a great player. And I think of the coaching he did before, he coached some Bantam level. And he came beyond the Montreal Canadian bench right away. Yeah. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at the Canadians, but I, I, in my head, I'm questionable about how come Martin St. Louis, out of nowhere, he was a great hockey player, that's for sure. But a great hockey player doesn't mean a great coach. And I think from now, Martin has. Uh, at the best chance to prove this fact because the year was gone by and the year was finished. But we're okay, going to see next year. But let me ask you this, though, Dino. With all due respect to Dominic Ducharme, who coached a lot longer than Martin St. Louis, uh, and I understand the Canadians made it to the final two years ago. I don't want to forget about that. But take a look no, at no. a couple of years ago. 
They struggled heavily under Ducharme. And yes, they had a lot of injuries too. But don't you find that this team is playing better under Marty St. Louis this year than they did a year ago when they relieved Dominic Ducharme of his duties? I have to say yes, because, you know, I, they all come together. And for me, a hockey team, it's not only the first line. The fourth line, and the, the way Martin St. Louis is coaching right now, is the best way. Because everybody has a chance to go on the ice and to prove what they could do. So that's the best thing for now. And okay, I can, I can grant it. But when you said, when you said about a minute ago, you know, Marty St. Louis coach Bantam. You know, you know, yeah. I don't think we have to bring it up anymore. Like when you watch him coaching right now, does he look like a guy who didn't have more experience than Bantam before getting this job? The answer is no. Dino, c'est un naturel, Dino. Comme toi à la radio, comme toi à la TV, comme toi sur les webcasts, comme toi en arrière du banc. <laughs> That's for sure. But, you know, it's, you know, where I'm a little bit mad, it's for, you know, take a guy like me. I don't know. I don't mean I could coach the Canadian. But when you see all the years that I passed behind the bench, all the level that I passed behind the bench, and, you know, I'm sure a few coaches that coach in the junior or university hockey or college hockey, when they see that, they must say, holy F, what the heck is happening? After all these years, because the guy wished to be a good hockey player, and he he goes right away behind the bench. I don't I don't understand that. I, really, the, uh, for me, yes, I, I, you know. But look, I hear you. But stuff like this happens, and it happens, and so. Everywhere. I mean, I mean, do you know, like, uh, you know, last year, up until last year, I had 19 years of experience in the media and I was on TV 10 times a year. And there were some that just stopped playing hockey and they were on TV 120 times a year. What do you want me to do? That's the I way it is. Something, yeah. You know, luckily for me, I found somebody who hired me who was putting me on TV 140 times a year. So now I'm happy. Dino. <laughs> Stem, mon chum. We'll see, and thank you, and keep the good job. All right, Dino. I'll talk to you soon. Merci, Tony. Merci, Bye -bye. Dino. Bye. Merci. Uh, Dino has... Is, is, uh, Dino's recovered very, very nicely for someone who mm. was told that he was never going to remember things again. He was never going to talk again. Uh, he was never going to walk again. He was never going to go to the gym again. He was never going to skate again. He was never going to, he's, he's able to do all of that stuff. And, uh, I give him a call every now and then and full transparency. I called him this afternoon and I said, uh, Hey, Dino Tabarnush, qu'est-ce que tu fais? Tony Marinaro. And he said, Hey, Tony, come on, someone. we're talking. And then. And then he said to me, he said, you know, can you remind me again, when is your podcast? And I said, Dino, sure. It's Monday to Thursday nights at 10 p.m. until around 11 p.m. And he said, okay, I'll be listening tonight. I'll be watching. And I said, fantastic. Uh, but I had no idea that Dino would be calling. And uh, that was a nice surprise. It was nice to you hear know, from Tony, Dino. I'm happy he was I, able to tell everyone his story. I, th You know, I'm happy too, because that's an amazing story. And you know what he said about uh, off the bat about Martin Saint Louis when you asked him about that. I was thinking about it, and he's right, but he's wrong because um, you're both right in a sense. Like if it's not next year, it's the year after. You know, like that's when the team has to make a jump, and you know you ha you have to start getting the most you can't the most juice out of the orange of the of Nick Suzuki of Cole Caulfield of uh, wh whoever else of, of Kirby Doc of whoever else is going to join them because you'd have to imagine that like you see all the juice that they have right now how old are they 21 22 23 not much older than that so mm -hmm. you got to imagine that as well as they're playing now there's more to give and Martin St. Louis got to be the one if he wants to keep his job to be able to get that juice 
because that's going to be the biggest challenge in my eyes. And that's what I think, uh, that's where I think Dino was leading to, but he just had it a year early. Let's go to Leo in Montebello. Leo. Yeah. What's going on? Hey, how you doing today? Very good. If you're, I, mean, I can hear the delay in the background. So if you're watching on your phone or your laptop or your iPad, whatever tablet you have, just put the volume down a little bit. Go ahead. What's on your mind, Leo? Uh, look, I don't know if you remember your last, your last radio day. I finally got through to talk to you. And, and I said to you, you know, this is Leo from Montebello. I got a restaurant. You got to come and see it. I remember. And I got some I cakes that you're going to love. But listen. I remember it like follow, it was. Uh, how do you I, follow Dino? Like, I, seriously. Yeah. Talk about your tough act to follow. Leo, I remember it like it was yesterday. Friday, May 27, 2022. It was one of the most emotional days of my life where um, I was saying goodbye, but I couldn't say goodbye because uh, yeah we didn't know did we? i thought i thought i should have uh broke the news to my uh to my uh, superior first uh and i would have loved to have an opportunity actually to be able to say goodbye after that but unfortunately you know that opportunity never came so um you, you know, know what it was it was never really a goodbye was it it was uh and, and so i mentioned this to chris nyland i was on uh chris's uh uh, raw knuckles podcast and i and yeah, I, yeah. Thank, I thank I chris thought. for having me it came out today and i was on with him and and his colleague uh tim stapleton and i mentioned to chris i said chris um i woke up that morning and uh i knew that it was time to to walk away and to dedicate myself to the podcast give more to the podcast where i can do the podcast with no restrictions whatsoever where I didn't have to worry about talking about the podcast. I didn't have to worry about promoting the podcast. I didn't have to worry about who was on my podcast. I didn't have to worry about, you know, uh, how many views I would get on my podcast. You know, I was doing the podcast and doing the radio show. And when the podcast was generating a lot of views or actually was bringing up, uh, bringing on a lot of sponsorship, I was almost doing it instead of being excited I was almost being concerned, you know what I mean? And I shouldn't have had to have been concerned. So I knew that, you know, it was time to walk away. But my listeners meant so much to me. And, you know, you know, you know most Tony, of them, like you, Leo, have followed over. But some of them are radio diehards who haven't followed over yet. Maybe one day they will, right? So I would have loved to have said goodbye. But I said to Chris... Maybe it's better that I didn't because I'm such a sensitive type and an emotional type. I probably wouldn't have been able to do it without breaking down the whole time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally get it. Listen, you, you did the right thing. It worked out good. Uh, I, I still listen in the mornings and I still think they made a, they made a mistake. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I want to say one thing, though. Well, I, 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 I want to tell you they, that last day and I got to tell you now. Tommy. The only thing that makes me crazy about listening to sports radio in Montreal is when they talk about wrestling like it's a sport. It just, it just makes me insane because there's so many sports that don't get the listening time. Yeah. They don't get the coverage because we're following this stuff and we know it's not real, but it makes money. So we got to follow it. So, so, so I'm going to tell you this. Okay. I'm going to tell you this. Um, I, I think I know what you're referring to, and there are two uh, two people there who are very, very. There, there are two people there who are very passionate about wrestling. Okay. Yeah. Now, tell you the truth, I I, I like it too. I I don't watch regularly, but when the shows come to Montreal, I like to attend. Okay. Um, those two gentlemen, they're two friends of mine. Uh, even though we haven't been in touch. Uh, all that much uh, since I left, but I consider them friends. They're very, very hardworking, okay? And they. I'm happy that they got the opportunity when I walked away. I'm happy they got the opportunity because they put in the time, okay? If, if I can give a general piece of advice, and it's not for them, but it's for everyone, okay? Mm-hmm. It's that when you work in sports radio, 
the show shouldn't be about it should be about what the listener wants to hear it's all about the listeners it's all about the viewers there are some that are more passionate about one sport or two sports than others and they'll close their eyes to certain sports and by the way I did it myself from time to time. It's a normal thing, right? I like soccer a lot. Sometimes I talk soccer too much for some people. Now, I thought that the way I conducted my show was I would talk about what the main story was, what's in the news, what is the city talking about, what's going on, and 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 I would I would ride the hot story, okay? Like for example, tomorrow it's going to be announced that the Montreal Alouettes were sold. I mean, I would ride that hot story. You got to go with it all day long from morning, oh, afternoon, yeah? and night. A couple of days ago, CF Montreal president Gabriel Gervais said that the team is looking into renovating the stadium or building a brand new stadium. You got to run with that story all the time. So my advice would be, even if you have a script or even if you want to talk about something you like, when a hot story comes out, you got to run the hot story. You got to ride the hot story. That's what I think sports radio is. And I think it's a little bit of personality too, and a little bit of charisma. And I think to be good at it, you have to have fun. And Leo, I had a lot yep. of fun. I had a lot of fun. And, you know, I made a decision to help grow this podcast. For Sammy, for Agnello, for myself, uh, for the people who started following the podcast. But, you know, I owe a lot to radio. I loved radio. I'm never, you know, I'm never going to, yeah, I'm never going to deny you, that. You, you, know? you, you did exactly the right thing at exactly the right time, Tony. I, I, I think that what you did, you got out with grace. You got out at the right time. And I got nothing. I got no problem. Like I said, I still listen to the boys in the morning. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If you found out tomorrow yeah. that the UFC was fixed, would you still follow it? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Leo. That's where I'm going to jump in. Nobody, right. nobody advertise. like everyone knows that it's not real air quotes because I don't know if you're watching live because you're on the phone. Um, but it's it's storytelling more than anything like nobody knows no, nobody is pretending like it's not predetermined and all that it, it, it's storytelling through sport and you know through live action rather than you know a, a love story you know they're 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 fighting it they're duking it out you know like that's Matt, what it's, it a, is. Matt, it's a soap opera for men that's what it is it, Exactly. That's a yeah. great way of putting it. That's a great way of putting it. So like nobody is pretending like like nobody pretends that Game of Thrones is is real. Like why do people have to make the argument? Oh, you know, wrestling's fake. Yeah, of course I know it's fake. I'm not an idiot. I'm, I'm, I'm entertained. Oh, we're, by not, watching. we're not talking I'm about Game of Thrones on a sports channel, though. Like what I'm saying is, is that there's so many sports that 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 are not getting the coverage. Well, because to be we fair, choose to, to, to follow this because of the money. And, and, and I totally understand the whole dollar thing about it. But yeah. in principle, I got a real problem with it. So, well, but, but, fair, but, but here's, here's, fair, here's the fair. challenge, though, Matt. Here's the challenge what Leo's talking about. Leo, you make a great point. But I'll say this. Let's just say there's two great amateur athletes in the province of Quebec who had an amazing week and did something remarkable, right? If you would give those amateur athletes the airtime or talk about them, the text Ooh. messages coming in, you'd get absolutely obliterated by 99th percent of the people listening that you're talking to amateur athletes because they would tell you no one doesn't care about amateur sports. And during those five, six, or seven, or eight minutes, I bet you the amount of people that listen on the Internet, the numbers go way down, and I bet you the ratings go way down. But I understand this is what I think has to happen, Leo. What I think has to happen, and this is the point I've been trying to stress over the last little while, okay? I think everyone needs to talk about the stuff that deserves to be talked about, okay? So, you know, everyone loves the Montreal Canadiens. 
but you can't talk Montreal Canadiens 24-7, seven days a week. So maybe you have shows on the weekend that you uh, you 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 give more time to amateur sports during those shows. Uh, and then in your other shows, you just, you got to talk about the stuff that everyone's talking about. If the stadium is the big story, you talk about the stadium. If it's the sale of the Alouettes, you talk about the sale, the sale of the Alouettes. If it's, if it's, uh, you know, Alex Belzil, you talk about Alex Belzil, but I, Leo, I totally understand your point. I think there's a time and a place to talk about wrestling, but you're right. There's also a time and a place to talk about other topics, but getting back to wrestling for just a second, and then we'll let you go. To have a better idea of how big wrestling is, Leo, I read this, and if you didn't read this, this is going to knock your socks off, okay? okay? Vince McMahon is talking with all the powers that be so that wrestling can actually be predicted in sports books, and you can bet on it. Mm -hmm. So they're looking into ways right now to make sure that there are no leaks of what the result of the match will be because they will be in the sports books. People will bet on the matches and millions of dollars will take place in transactions on wrestling. It's pretty significant. Okay, so that is like that's like the second silliest thing I have ever heard. And I won't even tell you what the silliest thing is, but, but that that's real close. But 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 Leo, it's silly to you because it doesn't interest you. But yeah, for their for them to be talking about this means that the interest is there. People are gonna bet on the matches, and it means so it means that it caters to a lot of people now. Whether it should be talked about on a sports radio show because it's sports entertainment and not an actual sport, I think there could be shows. This is the beauty of podcasts, Leo. You ready? I'm going to tell you what the beauty of podcasts is. For people who haven't I'm figured it out, I'm going to give them the secret to the caramel bar right now. Okay? <laughs> the, the beauty of podcasts is that nowadays... Leo, everything is on demand. So we opened up this podcast and we tried to see what we're going to talk about. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. We realized most people wanted Montreal Canadiens. When we weren't giving them Montreal Canadiens, they got upset. So what did we do? We opened up another podcast, which we have a couple of times a week, which we talk about CF Montreal in that other podcast. And on this podcast, we talk just about the Montreal Canadiens. So in terms of wrestling, if you have a wrestling podcast and you're a wrestling fan, you can go there to listen to it. But if you're listening to sports radio and you don't like wrestling, you know, you're going to hear it. It's going to bother you, right? That's that's the yeah. thing. That's the difference between that and podcast. Now, also, here's another thing, okay? This podcast goes on for about an hour, an hour, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 it, I don't think it's ever gone longer than like an hour 45. But for the most part, we average an hour. That's it. That's all. Okay? When you tell people that they have to do a four-hour radio show, you know what's going to happen? They're going to talk about the Habs. They're going to talk a little bit about the Alouettes. They might talk about CF Montreal. And then they're going to talk about wrestling. Then they're going to talk about hot dogs. Then they're going to talk about hamburgers. Then they're going to talk about mustard, mayonnaise, relish, ketchup, Chick-fil-A, uh, you name it. <laughs> they're asked to do four hours. You know who's the best in the world at this right now? His name is Pat McAfee. He does a three-hour podcast Monday to Friday. And he's got a team of about 20 or 30 people behind the scenes helping him. When you're two people oh, doing a four-hour yeah. podcast, a four-hour show, and you have three four-hour shows per day because you can't get more talent than that and you don't want to pay, you're going to end up getting wrestling talk, Leo. Yeah, Pat McAfee got nothing on you, my friend. 
No, listen, I'm not in Pat McAfee's league. I appreciate the kind words. No, I'm not. I appreciate the kind words. I thank you for saying that. You actually made my night. Um, (laughs) But, uh, you know, he's, he's... He's fantastic at what he does. He's a terrific entertainer, and uh, he's got his style. I got my style. He's the best. He's the best in the world. But you know what? I, I look. I want to be as as great as I can, and I, you know, I, I want to. I want to bring this podcast to a very high level. I'm very confident it's going to get there, and it, it's not a question of if; it's a question of when. I don't know when it's going to get there, but I made Sammy a promise. And I told him, Sammy, uh, whatever your wildest dreams are with this podcast uh, and with this podcast company, we're going to realize them. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen one day. And uh, I'm not looking back. And and, and I'm you so know, happy. Leo, I'm so happy that you followed me here. Like, for me, it's such an honor that you listened to me on the radio. And when I went to the podcast world full time, that you followed me. You have no idea how much that means to me, Leo. Yeah, you know, you know, listen to me. I, I'm listening to you. You're, you're, you're talking to Dino. I'm watching you wipe your eyes. You're a real person, Tony. You're an inspiration to everybody in Montreal. And, and, and you know, in Montebello, baby, I'm waiting for you. Come and see me. All right. Hey, what, can you do me a favor? Uh, yeah, I'd man. love to hook up with you because, like you said, the last time, uh, by the way, when I say hook up, I'm not talking about Netflix and chill here, okay? I'm talking about... <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about having a beverage, all right? Having a cold one or having a coffee. But uh, the last time we talked, like you said, prior to tonight, was when you called me on my last radio show on Friday, May 27th, and you told me to go down to Montebello. Can you please email me your coordinates, and I'm going to give you a call, and I'm going to come visit you in Montebello, because guess what? Guess what? What's that? Uh, in my old job, I used to have four weeks vacation, and I worked there for 20 years. In my new job, I have 12 weeks vacation from radio, 15 weeks vacation from television, and 12 weeks vacation from the podcast. And you want to hear the best part? What's the best part? I paid for all of them. Hey, Leo, <laughs> do me a favor. Send me send me your coordinates, please. Tony. I will, man. Tony at the sickpodcast.com. Once again, Tony at the sickpodcast.com. You got it. All right. Thank you, Leo. All right. That's Leo. All right. Um, we have what a great guy, eh? I don't like that he attacked wrestling, but uh, other than that, yeah. No, no, but guy. you know what? You're Matt, you're 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 rattled. His <laughs> comment on wrestling, I like I'm looking at you, your face changed colors, your demeanor just totally switched. You are rattled that he said that it bothered him that he listened to sports radio. And he heard wrestling talk on a on a sports radio show. It bothered you. It was the biggest story in the city for a weekend. It, it was actually. It, it was. It hundred percent. It, it was. Tony, let me tell you something. I went to. Uh, I go to the office for for work. I work from home, but I go to the office every Thursday. You're talking about went... Sami Zayn, of course, right? You're talking about Sami Zayn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I'm. I'm. This is when uh, Elimination Chamber and the SmackDown were in Montreal. I yeah. go for lunch. Uh, I, I went. In, I went to Cathcart. It's in Placeville Marie, and you know I'm walking by, and I just see a huge lineup of people, a re- like a two hour line of people w- is, in wrestling gear. Is that and place? I'm, by the way, is that place Cathcart? Is that happening or what? Oh my God, it's the best. So for those who don't, I, I shouldn't even say this because they're not paying for this. You're giving them free, uh, free advertising. No, no but you know, on on a Thursday night in particular. Oh yeah. Between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. It's really happening. As a matter of fact, I can tell you that tonight, earlier tonight, between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m., there were four Montreal Canadiens players that were there. Obviously, they weren't playing. Mm. Obviously. Yeah. But I can well, tell I've you been I've been there. Away. I've been there before when I've seen uh, you know, like half the team of CF Montreal there. Yes, so I, I, by, I, so I'll give you a chance to continue, but I know exactly where you're going to go. Yeah. When the WWE came to town and they had Friday night SmackDown on the Friday night, and they had Elimination Chamber on the Saturday night, on the Thursday afternoon or between 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, they had wrestlers at Cathcart Placeville Marie, correct? Yeah, well, like at a, at a store that's vacant right next to it. You know, and and like there was a two-hour line 
to get into the store because I don't know who was in there because they were all the way at the back of the store. I couldn't peek in, but I would have to imagine it was Sami Zayn or Kevin Owens or both. Sami Zayn was there. Yeah, there you go. And Sami like, Zayn was I, there. So how about this? I went. I was walking to. Uh, I was walking past it at eleven thirty or eleven forty-five when I walked back to my office at one fifteen. The line hadn't gotten any shorter. That's amazing. And it was speaking, all different people. Speaking of which, at Friday Night SmackDown, uh, Sammy's wife was sitting two rows in front of me. Mm. And Sammy's brothers and father were sitting the row to my left. And Sammy's brother and father came over and introduced themselves. And Sammy's brother... Uh, was very, very complimentary of my work, which I really appreciated. And I was very complimentary of his brother, who's worked very, very hard to get to that stage uh, that weekend where he was part of the main event of Elimination Chamber, which was pretty, pretty cool. So he told me he watches, and he told me he watches regularly. So um, to Sammy's brother, Hanny, Hanny, it was very, very nice meeting you that night. And thank you for the kind words, and thank you for watching. Uh, we have uh, we have a caller to go to. Okay, mm-hmm. will you do the honors? You see the caller at the at the end of the at the bottom of the chat. You yeah, see yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you to take this call for a second. Ask me why. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't know how to pronounce his name. I have to pee, man. I'm going no, nuts. No, you're such a liar. You're such a liar. Okay, what do I hold on a second? Hold on a second. What do I got to do to prove to you that I'm going to pee? Say his name right now. Uh, Kiwan? Is that correct? Is that Is what we Kiwan? got? We... I'm going with Kaiwan. Kaiwan? Kaiwan. Kaiwan. I was closer. So, hold on a second. Who was closer? Kaiwan. Like Taiwan with a K. Kaiwan, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Very good. I told I told Matt O'Han, my see, my wife, she still hasn't figured out that the beauty of podcasts, another beauty, is that we're not censored here. We can say yeah. whatever we want. So if I have to tell you I got to go to the bathroom, I can do it on the podcast. So when I just told you I had to go to the bathroom, I hear her from the other room saying, oh, my God. I told her, sweetie, I love <laughs> you. But when I... When I work, don't distract me, right? So I hear her already. Oh, my God. So now what am I going to do? I'm not going to go to the bathroom because I know that if I go pee, it's going to bother my wife. So I'm going (laughs) to stay here. Kaiwan, you talk. We'll listen. We'll have a conversation. If I end up peeing in my pants, I pee in my pants. And Yellow as my witness, um, I've been on the phone hanging here for 40 over 40 minutes wow okay uh so you know what you deserve this opportunity go ahead and thank you for holding on you're welcome brother listen uh so first of all uh shout out to danny and, uh, and I, I sammy and, and yellow yeah shout out to nylon chris nylon sorry shouldn't be using his last name like that okay that was a great uh, interview. Uh, it was quite insightful, actually. Just when I thought I knew you, that was a great interview. I mean, some lot of lot of uh, great insight there. Uh, but thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so, getting to the crux of my call, there's I actually had two questions I was going to ask you, but yeah, go ahead. I've already been waiting this this long. I'm going to keep it to the the injuries and. I've been looking it up, and, and and so maybe you could help me out with this, but I don't know. Long-term injured, there's a um, – if you know a player is going to be out for 10 days, apparently, through the NHL rules, or 24 uh, – sorry, yeah, 10 games or 24 days, then they're on the long-term injured. And so Correct. That up, Correct. That's how you qualify for LTIR. Correct. Right. So when I'm looking that up, and I've, I've kind of – I'm pondering it. I'm like, um, I look it up, and I'm like, how come some players who have been out longer than that, who don't even show up on the LTIR, and, I, and of course, I understand that there's 
only so much room. So how do they circumvent or get around that? Or is there some exceptions to the rule? Do you know anything about that? Because when I look at the long list, and I mean, some are day-to-day, so that doesn't count. But for some players that have been out a lot longer, they're not on the LTIR. And the reason I bring that up is because I know that Toronto Maple Leafs are trying to squeeze in under the cap. And I think some other teams are doing the same thing. But as it pertains to the ads, I'm quite, especially since we're so plagued this year, how do they, you know, I know the NHL probably finds you, I don't know what the what happens after that, but who, first of all, who oversees that, who keeps track of that, but just as a spectator, and just as someone who's a pretty diehard fan, I, I, I'm looking at this for a long time, and I know the difference between an injured and a long-term injured, and yet I don't see how some players are not on the long-term injured. You got any insight there? Uh, I got some insight. I'm not so sure I'm going to be able to answer all your questions, but we will look it up and we'll try and give you the answer. What I can tell you, based on my uh, knowledge of LTIR, is like you said, if a player is going to miss 10 games and 24 days, then they qualify. When a player is on long-term injury reserve, a team can go over the salary cap. But what ends up happening is the amount of money that you end up going over the cap. At that point, that goes into a long-term injury reserve. It's kind of like a uh, fund, like a pool, okay? Mm -hmm. And, And you can go over. Now, to answer your question as to why some show up on long-term injury reserve and some don't, uh, give me an example of a player who wouldn't. Just trying to think so, here. So, for example, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not cap-friendly for – I use it quite extensively. And it's an amazing site. Salary. Yeah. yeah uh, actually, I used to be on it when, back, back when it was cap heat, right? Yeah, yeah. So, $2.3 million and change um, – of 20 million remaining. And so I guess there's only some players that couldn't possibly go there because their salary is too much. Um, is that my understanding? Because Gallagher's been gone for way more than 10 games, but yet he's six and a half million. Is that why they can't put him on long term injured? Is that, is that, cause I'm trying to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, to tell you that I'm a hundred percent sure. Reserve. Uh, let me just uh, let me just check here. Um, I mean, for that for that case, even I mean, you could name others as well. I mean, um, I don't know. It's not the longest, but Brendan Gallagher is is. Uh, hold on a second. Is on injured reserve right now. Yeah. And. Uh, so is Jake Evans, Slavkowski, Caulfield, and Arbor Jackeye. Jackeye, and, yeah. uh, Army so the, and the other one are uh, up above. They're still not even listed as IR even. So they take they take their um, they take their uh, their cap hit and they put it on the injured reserve. And I think what you can only do is I I think you can probably use five players. And put them on the injured reserve. And then after that, you can take three players and put them on the long-term injured reserve. Um, I'm not sure about this, but I think that could be it. Because the Canadians have three players on the long-term injured reserve. Price, Monaghan, and Paul Byron. And so there's salary relief that's there. But the injured reserve is five players. And there's no salary relief there. We're gonna like we're gonna note your question. I don't want to give you the wrong yeah. answer. Uh, no, I appreciate that. No, just something that's been bugging me for a long time. I'm like, you know, I talk with my son and all that. He's really into it as well, and yeah, I explain certain things, you know. Yeah. And this one just just didn't make sense. I'm like, how come? You know, you got so many. I know we've had like at one time 13 players altogether were injured or long term or in, like regular injured. So. I don't know why some of it's showing up, some of it's not, and how you how you how they keep so, track of all these. So, so what yeah. we're going to do is we're going to note it, and when we come back, uh, when Mac comes back tomorrow, we'll see if you can get the right answer for you. But I believe it's three on long-term injured reserve, five on injured reserve. Long-term injury reserve has uh, salary relief. This one doesn't. 
I'm not entirely sure, though. Matt's going to have all the right information for you tomorrow. Thanks for holding on as long as you did, Kaiwan. We really appreciate it. You got it, man. Go all take right. yourself. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Kaiwan. All right, there you have it. Uh, Matt O'Han, on that note, uh, that's it for tonight. It's 1120. We went over time. We said that we would go for at least an hour. We went for an hour 20. Uh, what are you looking at tomorrow night on the sick podcast um, starting at 10 p.m.? We're still booking guests, but uh, I want to place uh, a lot of focus on on the draft. I think uh, that was in the news. Uh, you know, I feel like Hab's Twitter went a little crazy on Monday night. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk draft. I also want to talk a lot of Martin St. Louis and how he's basically managed. If anyone can crack the code as to, you know, how he's managing to keep this team afloat, because I don't care how good your concepts are. Uh, if you don't have the personnel, it's just what he's doing is, is, is I've never seen anything like this. Um, so those are the two main topics for tomorrow night. De guests TBD. Uh, I hear you, bud. I'll be watching and, uh, you'll be watching too. Matt O'Han tomorrow night, the sick podcast starting at 10 PM for all of you watching tonight. Uh, message sick S I C K. If you loved the podcast S I C K like it, share it with your friends. We really appreciate it. And if you're going to be listening on Google, Apple, or Spotify, leave us a five-star review. It really goes a long way with us. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, just as I was going to, Sammy says one more call. Okay. Sammy says one more, uh, Gino and Shamity. Gino. Gino, are you there? Do we have Gino? G going yes, once. Hi, Tony. Man, I was just about to go to the bathroom. Hi, Gino. <laughs> You're such Hi. a liar. Tony, how are you? Hold liar. on a second. Hold on a second. I don't You're such a liar. Hold on a second. What do I gotta do to prove it to you? I... <laughs> Ange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want I, I want Ange. I want Ange to come in. Hold on. Ange, can you come here, please? Oh, she's in the blanket. She's doing this uh, this uh, blanket that's kind of like a uh, uh, a heat blanket where you uh -huh. know all the, your toxins come out and stuff. She can't move. Ange, can we do this? Okay. I just told Matt that I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. He told me I'm lying. Okay. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. If I <laughs> indeed hold on a second. If I indeed go to the bathroom, will you tell Matt that I went to the bathroom? Yes. Okay, you're gonna say it, you're gonna shout it, okay? First of all, say hi to Matt loud. Hi, Matt. Did you hear her? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. He heard you. Hold on a second now. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Gino, hold on. Don't go anywhere, okay? Don't worry, don't worry. All right, Gino. Tony is actually leaving the <laughs> he actually left. Um, so Gino, just uh tell what what's up, what's up, what's on your mind, Gino? Well, I really wanted to talk to him because, uh, you know, uh, I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of things to tell him. Honestly, uh, uh, I remember uh, <clears throat> listening to his uh, PSN six ninety. Uh, my mm -hmm. dad would come and get me uh, at school, and the radio would turn on, and it's it was always TSN. And uh, yeah, I really wanted to uh, I really wanted to talk to him. All right. Well, uh, and, uh, you got me. You got me at least. I mean, you got the second, yeah. the second in command, the other guy, yeah. I guess. Uh, but uh, but you know, he'll be back. He'll be back. So, uh, but just uh, yeah. I mean, what did you think of uh, of what we had to say tonight about Martin Saint Louis, how he's transformed the team? What do you you know? You got any thoughts on Mike Matheson going forward? I don't know. Just uh, you, give me give me something. Give me anything. Mar Martin looks great, honestly. Like. I have a I have a hockey account fan account, and uh, really praying on this on this team to you know try and finish as low as they can. But you know he's uh, he's really not letting them uh, not letting uh, the team go down without a fight every night. Uh, every time you watch them, they're uh, man they're always competing. It's crazy. I'm yeah, back. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm Tony. Back. You know what? You know what? Yeah. Um. So so Gino is just telling us. First of all, he wants to talk to you. Uh, obviously. Uh, hold, on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on a sec. Babe, did I go to the bathroom? Yes. Why were you on mute? <laughs> no, that, that, they didn't hear me, babe. Did, did I go to the bathroom? Yes, you did. Okay, did you hear my wife? Okay. Yeah, I heard your okay. wife, but uh, yeah. I hate to break it to your wife. You were not on mute. No, I was not on mute, no. So you heard and me? And I heard, 
Yeah, I heard you pee. Yeah. Um, but what I was, was more concerned about. It's pretty long, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a long pee. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what I'm more concerned about. I, I don't know. And, G- and by the G- way. Gino, I don't know. No, I, don't on, enjoy, I don't enjoy doing that during the show, okay? Because the water was very cold. Go ahead. Yeah, I know. Uh, okay. Wait, I know Gino caught it uh, because he was in the middle of talking when I was saying this, uh, when I heard this. But uh, I also just happened to notice I didn't hear any water running. Do you? You don't want? You don't like to? Uh, you don't wash your hands, or what's going on there? Hey, you don't wash your hands, or what's going on? Jesus, you know what? I forgot to wash them this time. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I had to. Learn, I had to get back to the show right away. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> all right hey, listen i believe you you're not a liar you're not a liar i believe you. gino what's going on my man nice to talk to you nice to talk to you too uh i was just talking to, to matt about uh uh listening to your the tsn uh every time my dad you know picked me up you would uh, every time you turn on the the car it's always tsn uh, every time never be listening to music it's always always listening to you guys and uh yeah it's uh so it's a nightmare, I like it. I cherish it. And uh, when you move to uh, the sick podcast, uh, what I would do is uh, I'm not allowed of, of using my phone at school. Well, what I would do is uh, during my lunch break, I would put my phone in my, uh, my Etienne Crayon. Okay. In French. And uh, I, would, I would put my AirPod on and I would go in the library and I would uh, listen to your podcast. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And like I said, like because, I said, uh, to, yeah. like I said to Leo and Montebello, I mean, for me, built up a pretty big following in 20 years. And the fact that, you know, those followers have followed me over, that means everything to me, man, because guess what? If they didn't, well, the podcast was not going to have a lot of success, but they did. And so the podcast is going to have a lot of success. So, you know, I'm very appreciative, very, very appreciative. And I've always said this, uh, you know, like everyone likes their listeners, but I mean, I love mine. And I, and I think I, I had the most loyal following in all of talk radio in Montreal. I really believe that. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I think the success the podcast is having is, 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 is proving that. So thank you so much for that. It's really, it's really easy to, to get you here on YouTube. Honestly, it's a lot easier than, than TSN when you put TSN on Google example, it's a lot harder and uh, it gets in the way sometimes. And honestly, look, you on YouTube is definitely better. Look, radio, uh, and, and I said this before, I'll say it again. Radio has always had a special place in my heart and radio is radio, but the podcasting world, it's taking over because you have so much possibility to do things with podcasting. Number one, you're on demand. So, you can have specific programs to talk about specific topics. So you, if you want to hear about the Montreal Canadiens, you're going to come to this podcast. If you want to hear about CF Montreal, you're going to go on to the sick podcast, CF Montreal talk. And, you know, if you're a New York Jets fan, you're going to go on to the sick podcast with our, uh, you know, New York Jets podcast that was actually made official and launched today. And if you're a Raiders fan, you're going to go on to the sick podcast the Raiders talk that was launched about a week ago. And if you're a fan of the Memphis Grizzlies, you're going to go on to the sick podcast, Memphis Grizzlies talk, which is going to be launched next week. If you're a Maple Leafs fan, you can listen to the sick podcast Leafs talk was, which, which was launched about a year ago. The sick podcast is by next week going to be uh, about 12 podcasts strong, uh, two of which are in Montreal. The other 10 are elsewhere in North America. Uh, and so, you know, um, it's, that's a big advantage that you have with podcasts. It's on demand and it could be specific. Number one, number two, you don't have to be on for four hours where really all you're going to have is about an hour and a half of sports conversation. And for an hour and 45 minutes, you're going to have something that's not. And then for 45 minutes, you're just going to have commercials, uh, number three, you know, you're not going to get any commercials here. You're going to hear who our sponsors are very, very quickly, and that'll be it. And you're not going to, you know, you're not going to have to break away for about seven minutes of commercials. So that's a, a, another benefit. Another benefit was, you know what, even though this podcast is at 10 PM at night 
If the Montreal Canadiens do something very significant or something significant would happen tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock, I'm going to go on at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and that's another benefit that you can have. And, and, you know, the other benefit is that you can watch this whenever you want, really. And if you're an advertiser, you know what? It, you know, your, your ad your, your ad is going to be in a library, whether it's on, on any social media app or YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, and it's going to be there all the time. So radio is special. It always has been and it always will be. But take a look at the way the world is transitioning. It's going to podcasts, and uh, and it's going to be there for a very, very long time. And so I decided to um, get on the bus now instead of getting on later. And maybe one day some will get off the radio bus and they're going to get on the podcast bus. And by the time they do that, I'll have been six or seven years in, and maybe I might just retire, or maybe I don't, and I'm really getting into the best years of my podcast life. So no regrets. Very, very happy. Thank you for following. Very much appreciated, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, Tony. All right. There you have it. Gino in Shamity. Hey, bud. We went an hour and a half tonight, but guess what? We're not going to go four hours, and we're not going to talk ketchup, mustard, and relish because, let's face it, if we were going four hours, you and I would be talking about ketchup, mustard, and relish, but we're not going four hours. We went an hour and a half, and I want to tell you. Instead, we, instead we talked about uh, you going to the bathroom. Yeah, it, we did, <laughs> but you know that what? That was awesome. It, you awesome. know what? We talked about me going to the bathroom, and I went to the bathroom, but it lasted what? I was I was back 30 seconds later instead of yeah. going to the bathroom during a commercial break, which lasted eight minutes. It's much more better this way, is it not? Listen, you're lucky I'm here. Otherwise, uh, yeah. you'd, still be, uh, you'd still be holding in that pee. Yeah, and don't ever tell me that I'm lying about going to the bathroom yeah, again. You know what? I, I got, I'll eat my words. I, I can't call you a liar anymore. All right, you're I, a good I can't man. Do that. Hey, I'll be watching tomorrow night. And uh, look, we gave you a call to tell you the truth. We, you know, we gave you a call at nine thirty or something like that, and said, "Do you feel like coming on?" And you said yes right away. And so, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it, buddy. Hey, Tony. Uh, listen, you do favors for me. I do favors for you. Where this is how this thing works. Thanks, man. I love you, buddy. Love you too, Tone. All right. He's Matt O'Han. I'm Tony Marinero. Follow us on the Sick Podcast weeknights, Monday to Friday at 10 p.m. O'Han will bring it to you tomorrow night. I'm Marinero. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature.